joined today with Yuji Stavochek, um, the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences at Polotsky University in Olomos in the Czech Republic. Dr. Martin Zakovich, the former Vice President of Medical Staff Affairs and Medical Director of the Hospitalist Program in Mercy, Iowa City, here in Iowa. And last but certainly not least, uh, Dr. Anna uh, Kaliova, uh, who is the Director of Clinical Research and the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine in Washington, D.C. So we will begin with what's happening in the United States um, and certainly in Iowa also, but Dr. Zakovich, excuse me, can you give us a brief overview of uh, of the pandemic and what's what happened in the United States? Certainly. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Wonderful. Well, first and foremost, I want to take the opportunity yep. to thank Teresa, Jim, and Cecilia to putting this all together for their leadership, organizing the meeting, and also. Of the uh, museum. And uh, I think uh, the museum, for those that you don't know, is here since 1974. Uh, Presidents Clinton, uh, Havel, and Kovacs were here in 1995 to uh, dedicate the building, which kind of uh, puts all the three countries into perspective and together. And uh, uh, the, one of the latest achievements of the museum is that we are Smithsonian affiliate since 1918. So this is a great institution that it not only not only allows us to create a platform co for collaboration and uh, working together across the Atlantic in this virtual way, but also an institution that is preserving the past uh, and uh, building a brighter future for all of us. With that, I'll get to my points here. So uh, first and foremost, uh, how do we look in the United States and in Iowa? Can you please advance the slide? Uh, So uh, first, world, we do have around uh, 9 million cases, and this is data from yesterday when I composed these pictures together, so they're evolving every day. And approximately half a, people, half a million people died because of COVID. Next one, please. As uh, far as the United States of America, you can already tell it's kind of disproportionately high out of 8 million, uh, basically 2.3 million people being here in the US with almost 120, actually it's over 120,000 uh, people who deceased due to COVID uh, illness. And just to make it out of the, uh, make it in a proportion, you can uh, do the calculation. Uh, if you do the uh, incidence for the world, it's probably one in 1,000, and in US like one in 150. So it's a higher, part of it might be testing, but I don't wanna dilute the uh, information and get into the weeds right now in a conversation. Next slide, please. As far as the uh, cumulative cases, it is increasing, and I'm sure we'll hear from Czech Republic as well as from Slovakia how the things are evolving, but uh, definitely in the United States of America, the curve is not, it's flattened, but it's not flat yet. Uh, next, please. Uh, and here are uh, some data about the uh, cases per age group. You see the most affected group are the people uh, above 50. You can read the graph yourself. And uh, the most affected people who are prone to die due to COVID-19 illness are the elderly and the ones with a disability. What I wanna point out here is that most recently, uh, and I will talk about it just in just a little bit, in the United States of America, uh, the Southern states and the Western states, there is a growing number of cases and we are seeing the uh, younger people being diagnosed more and more. And this is the group in between around 20, 25 uh, years of age. So it's swaying a little bit towards the younger population. Next slide, please. Uh, here you have the same number in the left lower corner for the United States of America. And Iowa is in the right lower corner. Just to give you a brief perspective, uh, Iowa has about 3 million people, again, rounding it up. Czech Republic, around 11 million people, again, rounded up. And Slovakia, around 5.5 million people. So comparing to Slovakia, Iowa is about three times as big as far as land, but it's approximately half the population. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the slide about Iowa, uh, about 26,000 cases and about 700 people that uh, deceased. Uh, again, putting it in, into a slight perspective in uh, Czech Republic, uh, 
with 11 million people, there are around 11,000 uh, cases, from what I know, around 340 people that uh, died. And in Slovakia, only 1,628 people died. So there is a little bit disproportionate, and I'm sure we'll come to the discussion uh, why the numbers look like they do. With that, I think my next slide is the one that is the last one. And I will just turn it over after to, to my co-presenters. And I want to end up with these Iowa statistics. And you can read the slides. Individuals tested all together, quarter million, over a quarter million people tested. And uh, the testing is now kind of still climbing, still more and more people getting tested. But you see it's ramping up. We started low and getting up, and that's what we want. Individuals that are positive, you can kind of see the surge there in early May and now kind of going down, and the same thing with death. So uh, I think here in Iowa, we are flattening the curve and we are doing better, but yet again, what is there to come? It's uh, for probably the next part of our discussion. Thank you. That is great, thank you. Uh, next, we will we will uh, proverbially travel to Slovakia. Uh, so uh, Dr. Kaliova, uh, if you could just chat about uh, what you're seeing, I guess, in Slovakia in response to COVID-19. Wonderful. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this panel. Uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Izakovic for the wonderful overview of the situation uh, in uh, the United States. Uh, can you see my screen right now? Can you see the presentation? We cannot right now. Pardon me? It's not showing up right now. Oh. It was a second ago. It's over my whole screen, so I'm wondering. There it is. Can you see it now? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, so how can a small country like Slovakia with a population of 5.5 million people contain a pandemic? Uh, is it even possible? Uh, so let's look at an overview. Let's look at um, the numbers. Um, up to date, um, there's, there have been only uh, less than 1,600 cases of COVID-19. Uh, the first case was described in March the 6th and uh, the culmination was around April the 18th. Uh, we can see that the number of deaths is 28, which is pretty amazing for a population of more than 5 million people. And we can see that the active cases in Slovakia have been um, very effectively contained. Uh, so um, Slovakia, um, after the culmination in, in April, uh, the, the curve has come down nicely. Uh, can it be explained by uh, age distribution? We know that the seniors are at a higher risk. Um, about 50% of the Slovak population um, is in the productive age between 25 and 49. And 16% of the Slovak population uh, is above the age of 65. So Slovakia has been able to protect the vulnerable population of the seniors most effectively. Uh, this is just a list of measures that Slovakia has undertaken to contain the pandemic. Uh, so even before the first case on March the 6th, uh, Slovakia already started on February the 28th to screen uh, any passengers arriving in Slovakia. They were screening their temperature. And right after the first case on March 6th, on March 9th, um, primary schools closed in Bratislava, uh, then secondary schools also in other districts. And uh, on March the 12th, emergency was declared. Uh, then on March the 25th, uh, compulsory face masks uh, were ordained. Um, then the 25th of April, tentative four-phase program of lifting certain uh, quarantine requirements. And now, um, we can see that the country is in the fourth phase, completely reopening its country because it, it 
it has been able to contain uh, its pandemic in an effective way. So this is just a quick overview of um, how the curve can not only be flattened, but actually brought down and how the pandemic can be completely contain contained. Over to Jim Yu. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, certainly last but not least, um, Yoshi, could you chat with us about uh, what you see going on in the Czech Republic and certainly at Olomos as well? Uh, <clears throat> thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for Cecilia and her colleagues uh, for organizing this. And um, uh, let me talk about a little bit of, uh, about Czech Republic and uh, and almost uh, Czech Republic uh, is something uh, between uh, Slovakia and uh, US in approach to, uh, towards COVID-19. We were in the very beginning uh, quite uh, quick in, uh, in uh, measures. So the general curfew happened already on March 16. And um, wearing a mask uh, Czech Republic was the first one in Europe it was mandatory from uh, from uh, uh, March 19th and um, the coordinated uh, system of uh, of uh, uh, of um, uh, of first aid or first help started really uh, working uh, immediately on March 16 under the Professor Primula and Czech Republic closed its borders right about that time and uh, the curfew the uh, 24th um, there was no quite uh, complete shutdown like in, in case of Slovakia uh, Slovakia was closed down its borders uh, to outside world uh, much more than Czech Republic, we we have a large number of people who commute to work in Germany, Austria, and Poland, and especially uh, uh, especially Germany and Austria um, uh, negotiated with the Czech, Repo Czech government, uh, uh, you know, some kind of uh, al allowance for the especially medical staff to daily cross the borders between Czech Republic, Germany and Czech Republic and Austria. So uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, as my colleague uh, Martin already mentioned, we have roughly 11,000 cases. Uh, specifically today it was 10,728 cases. Uh, we have uh, three, uh, 343 deaths so the the numbers are worse than than in Slovakia however it's uh, uh, it's it's quite in the in the in the overall picture it's not really uh, disastrous uh, the highest uh, percentage of uh, cases was in Prague where uh, which happens to be the most international city in Czech Republic and um, to Olomouc, uh, unfortunately, uh, paradoxically, Olomouc, even as a provincial center, uh, was one of the high uh, places with the highest cases in the country. And it was not because of the city of Olomouc, but because of the surrounding areas. We had a complete shutdown and lockdown in three towns, Solitovel, Unichov, and Červenka. Uh, roughly 8,000 people near Olomouc. Uh, these uh, these three towns were locked. Uh, the the police was monitoring. People couldn't go out, couldn't go in. Uh, it was roughly running for three weeks, and uh, that was the most uh, dramatic part of the whole situ whole situation in Czech Republic. I uh, I happened to be present in testing people out after the lockdown was called off or the curfew in these three towns and uh, um, I would like to mention that COVID doesn't have only a directly medical uh, um, impact or 
physical impact, it has also psychological impact, and I would like to talk about it later in 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 uh, in, in our discussion about that. So uh, I would say Czech Republic is uh, is now roughly open. Uh, masks are uh, are going to be completely voluntary from July first, and uh, and our borders are open. We have pockets of uh, of uh, of uh, COVID uh, uh, return or you know return cases, but uh, so far the curve uh, uh, flattened, but the number of cases uh, as we are talking is going up. But uh, so far, no no more measures were taken, uh, like in the beginning in March. So that that would be it for now from from me. Thank you. Um, we're going to open it up uh, to, for questions, but before we do that, I just wanted to ask each of our panelists. Um, how do you, I guess, when, when you look at the response to the pandemic, how do you look at each country, I guess, to say how countries have handled it differently, um, good or bad, how, we, how each country is handling it differently? Um, and I'd just like to ask first, I guess, Dr. Kaliba, as you ask, uh, you're living in the United States, but obviously your connection is to Slovakia. Um, what is your, what's your opinion on how, um, on these things? screen um, so that I can make a comparison um, between the countries. Thank you. Can you see the presentation now? It showed up but it disappeared. Okay, let me try again. Sorry for these technical issues but we'll solve them I'm sure. How about now? There it is. Yeah, can you see it? Yep. yep. Wonderful. So what are the, the similarities and the differences between the countries? Um, so first of all, let's look at a direct comparison in the numbers. We can see um, that in terms of um, combined cases, uh, the overall comparison is very unfavorable uh, for the U.S. While Slovakia and Czech Republic flattened the curve, um, the curve still uh, continues to be rising in the U.S. This is a curve per um, million uh, people adjusted for the population size. So we can see that Slovakia is one of the leaders um, in the whole world. And the Czech Republic uh, is somewhere uh, in between and pretty well off, while the U.S. is um, the worst off, um, followed by Sweden that didn't take any preventive measures um, at all. Now, can we, dis can we explain these disparities um, because of the age distribution? Uh, let's look at the age distribution in, in these countries. So in the U.S., uh, the senior population above 65 years um, increased from 9% in 1960 to uh, about 13% in 2010. So 13% uh, of the U.S. population uh, are seniors. Uh, in the Czech Republic, this number uh, is about 19%. So the Czech Republic has a higher percentage, uh, percentage of seniors uh, than the U.S. And Slovakia is somewhere, uh, somewhere in between them with 16%. So the senior population uh, is higher in Slovakia than in the U.S., but lower than in the Czech Republic. In other words, um, it's, age is not really correlating with the differences that we see in the curves. Um, because according to the age, the United States should be the best off out of the, these three countries. But we also know that other comorbidities affect um, the, the numbers uh, of retracting COVID-19, but, but also developing complications. And we know that the United States is the leader in the world with more than 38% of population being obese. 
Uh, Czech Republic uh, has 21% uh, percent of population obese and it's only 16% in the Slovak Republic. So it seems that the low rates of obesity in the Slovak Republic uh, might to a certain degree explain uh, the how, why the Slovak Republic was able to contain the pandemic so effectively. Uh, let's also look at other comorbidities, uh, except for um, or in addition to obesity rates. Um, the COVID-19 cases and mortality rates are also affected by uh, cardiovascular disease. And in this case, um, the picture is very unfavorable for the Slovak Republic uh, in the worst um, or the highest uh, heart disease mortality rates out of all these three countries and the best rates or the lowest rates being in the United States. Um, so it's um, again the cardiovascular disease rates are not really corresponding uh, to the outcomes. If we uh, summarize on these findings that we have covered so far, um, then the senior population um, is only 13% in the US, so we would expect the US to have the better, the best outcomes in COVID-19 in terms of um, the percentage of senior population. However, uh, the obesity rates are the highest in the US and seem to be driving the COVID-19 uh, pandemic rates as well. And cardiovascular mortality is the lowest out of all these three countries in the US. Um, so except for obesity, we haven't found any correlation with age or cardiovascular mortality and COVID-19. Uh, what about the preventive measures? The first case of COVID-19 uh, was in early March in both Slovakia and the Czech Republic. And uh, first cases were reported in January in the US. Public emergency um, was declared on March the 12th, both in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. Uh, and at, at the end of January in the US. So the first response was pretty quick in all of these countries. Um, uh, the preventive measure of, face, of wearing uh, face masks in the public um, was also pretty quick in Slovakia and, and in the Czech Republic. However, uh, the US were pretty slow uh, in this respect. Um, CDC uh, first recommended wearing facial masks on April the 3rd. But you probably know that the president said publicly that he's not going to wear it. And so it took a while to really enforce wearing facial masks in public. And here in DC, it didn't come into effect until May the 15th, so pretty late in the game. Uh, also, the travel ban uh, was declared pretty early on in Slovakia and in the Czech Republic on March the 13th and March the 16th. And uh, on March the 20th, uh, the U.S. started uh, a travel ban with uh, China. However, we, it was super slow in uh, taking any action steps against um, traveling from Europe. And in March, when uh, Italy already um, you know, had their COVID-19 pandemic and all the European countries were taking preventive measures to contain the pandemic locally in Italy and prevent people uh, coming from to their countries from this area. The US still was super slow in responding and there were no regulations whatsoever. So um, definitely restricting the travels, um, the U.S. was pretty uh, pretty late uh, in the game. And with this, I would like to turn it over to Jim. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Yerji, uh, give us some give us some perspective from the Czech Republic, if you want. Well, uh, let me uh, um, let me mention, you know, one thing that we are I will look uh, uh, to it from uh, from slightly different perspective as uh, as I'm slightly differently trained in my life. <clears throat> I would not like 
uh, it's very difficult to compare countries like Czech Republic or Slo and Slovakia towards countries the size of the United States. We are talking, uh, uh, in, in the case of the United States, we are talking about uh, uh, 33 times bigger country uh, by population than Czech Republic. Also, we are talking about um, uh, multiculture, multi-ethnic, multi-religious uh, uh, society or societies, group of societies where in Czech Republic and Slovakia uh, we are talking about European national states, uh, monocultures in many ways uh, uh, in compare with perspective of United States. So the, the, since the, um, the, uh, the COVID is uh, influencing or impacting society. We cannot forget the societies that are impacting. They are really, uh, we, uh, everybody who travels between Czech Republic, or Slovakia to United States, knows right away the difference because the societies are very different. The healthcare systems are very different. I'm, I'm teaching uh, at, uh, at our university the, the healthcare systems. And the healthcare systems in these uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia are comparable. This used to be one federal state, but the uh, United States is a is a, is a country with uh, many systems within within this large large entity. So I would like to just stress that they are really underlying uh, influences on. Uh, in any uh, medical emergency of this scale that we are now facing. And um, so uh, uh, I, uh, I understand the, uh, the, the need to compare it, but uh, in many ways it would be easier to compare regular uh, states of the Union with, uh, with Slovakia or with the Czech Republic, because the population of Czech Republic is roughly New York City. But again, uh, that's just the size of the population. We cannot compare the society of New York City to Czech Republic, where uh, you have uh, all cultures of the world represented in New York City, where it's difficult, uh, you know, in compare with uh, with these two. So I would like to uh, to stress this this underlying issues that uh, that impact the, the results and. And uh, you know, it's 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 a really complex issue. It's uh, and I would not like to just land up comparing statistics. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Jim's having some technical issues, which of course with technology is bound to happen. Um, but thankfully, I also know what we're talking about today. So lastly, uh, we wanted to hear from Martin, um, since you also live in the United States, but are from Slovakia, what are your perspectives caring, comparing these three countries? Yep, I think I muted myself. So uh, last but not least, uh, first and foremost, I don't pretend to know it all. Nobody knows. This is an evolving thing. Half a year ago, we didn't know about this virus. Looks like this virus is here to stay. It's a global issue. It's not an issue that can be solved, whether in Slovakia, Czech Republic, United States, or any, any continent even. So it's an evolving thing. Uh, I do have my background in medicine as a medical doctor. I have my PhD in public health and uh, the uh, Master of Sciences in um, Administration and in Management in Medicine. So I think I can offer perspective from all of, the, all of these, just uh, to scroll through a few things. So we already uh, pointed out the United States. Next one, please. Uh, Czech Republic, I'm not going to repeat because it looks like all three of us used very similar sources uh, and we have uh, pretty much the same data to the number. Uh, uh, so the perspective that I wanted to point out is United States is 30 or 33 times the size of uh, Czech Republic, 60 times the size of Slovakia, and uh, maybe 110 times the size of Iowa. So maybe just comparing uh, the countries, w countries will be difficult due to all of these things that Irji mentioned as well, but a similar curve was already showed by Hanna. So uh, obviously the curve uh, comparing Czech Republic 
uh, versus USA, uh, the flattening of the curve. This was already shown. I'm, I'm not going to waste time on that. Next one, please. Similar with uh, Slovakia and uh, already uh, the, the people that spoke before me pointed out that maybe the speed when the measures were taken uh, plays a bigger role because once it starts to demonstrate the widespread of infection in population, then it's way harder to contain as opposed to avoid the surge. But this was already commented on, so I will uh, advance further, please. Uh, and, and maybe I'll just end up with uh, this type of cumulative graph here that shows Czech Republic, United States, and Slovakia. In the first uh, line or first kind of row, you see uh, the cumulative cases. And yet again, just to demonstrate the, what we said three times, all three of us, that it seems like Slovakia did the best with flattening the curve early on and keeping it flat, although fully realizing that there are new cases. I believe yesterday there were 18 new cases in the country of Slovakia, but that's nothing compared to the cases that we see here in the United States. Of course, you need to adjust for population, so on and so forth. Czech Republic did very similar, very good job. It was shown in different graphs. I just want to point out the same thing. And here in the United States, uh, the cumulative cases are still climbing, specifically pointing out uh, the uh, second column or second row, if I, if I will, is uh, the uh, cases by day. Czech Republic, you see the surge there in March, April, flattening in May, and now very few cases. Of course, there are some spikes, and you just talked about it in some uh, foci as well, and we will have it everywhere. Slovakia, very similar, kind of keeping it flat. And the United States in the middle, uh, having the new cases still coming in. Just yesterday, there were 5,000 new cases in Texas, 5,000 new in California, I believe 3,000 in Florida. Altogether, the United States reported around 35,000 new cases just yesterday. And I believe uh, this is a couple hundred up and down. I'm rounding it up. This is basically top three days in the history of the COVID here in the United States together with April 9th and April 21st, which kind of signifies that uh, laxing and or uh, opening too soon has risks of uh, resurgence. But I'm sure Yuri and other people probably comment on the downfalls of keeping the economy and travel and everything closed for too long, which obviously is not good either. So there is this fine balance that all of us are struggling to find and live with it. This uh, thing is here to stay. And uh, I think as every other illness, we need to do four things. Understand the disease. And I think we are getting way better in understanding the disease, the research. Yeah, I think it's unprecedented how many advances are done in such a short amount of time. Uh, collaborative effort across the Atlantic, across the Pacific, the whole world is basically working together. I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but it, people are collaborating because everybody realizes that this is a global issue. Secondly, we need to be better in diagnosing the new cases. And now we have more and more tests available. Some of them take an hour. I remember in our hospital when we started, by the way, we had in our hospital, the first two cases in the state of Iowa were in our hospital and it, it took days to get the results. Now it takes minutes to take the results, uh, so that's way better. The third thing that we need to do with every disease and with COVID as well is to uh, treat the affected. And we are not as good there uh, as on the previous two ones. Uh, there are tests with remdesivir. There were um, things about hydroxychloroquine that some people like more than others, covalescent plasma steroids, and uh, yet to be determined what's the, the best uh, uh, treatment. Uh, and lastly, and I think that's the most important thing and the most promising thing, hopefully we'll be able to prevent the disease from happening, not only by distancing, uh, closing borders and so on and so forth, but also by vaccinating people. And uh, I sure do hope within a year from today, uh, we will have the vaccine and it will be readily available. But until then, I think as I have two hands, I'll display two fine masks here. They are either, you, you choose yours, either the United States of America or the Slovakia, you better put it on and, and wear it for now. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to our moderator and thank you very much. That is great, thank you. And don't worry, those masks are for sale in our museum store and we'll be happy to ship one no matter where you live. 
And this is good. This is great information. I find this just fascinating to see how three countries are dealing with it very differently. And obviously, all all three of those countries are are central to, to what we do here. Um, I know we have several uh, comments. Um, I cannot see them, but I'm going to I'm going to send it back to Teresa um, to see again for whomever would like to answer some of these questions. And then we will open it up. We have, I think we'll be okay time-wise to questions that have not been submitted. Um, the only question that I have is uh, people were wondering, so when we compare the population of these three countries and the fact that the United States is you know, 30 to 33 times as much, when we compare the numbers of the Czech Republic and Slovakia and times those by 30 or 33, is it similar to the United States? I will let anyone answer that one that feels, has anyone, I guess, done that math yet and compared. I tried to do the math yesterday, so I will take a first step, but I'll be corrected and hope people will correct me so I don't uh, share any misleading information. Uh, looks like United States, 330 million, 2.3 million cases. So it's like one in 150 or so. Please check my math. Uh, Czech Republic, 11 million, 11,000 cases. That one is easy. It's one in 1,000. Uh, and Slovakia, 5.5 million, 1.6,000, 1,600, 1 in 3,500. Yet again, rounding it up. World, altogether 8 billion, which I had to look in the Wikipedia, what is billion? So it's 1,000 million. So, uh, and it has 9 million cases, so 8, 9, same stuff, so 1 in 1,000. So in my math, it says world is 1 in 1,000, US 1 in 150, Czech Republic 1 in 1,000, just like the world, and Slovakia 1 in 3,500, so uh, substantially less. I, I cannot stress it, uh, stress it more than, than, uh, than what I did before, you know, but we all know because we know uh, all three countries. I accept. Uh, I expect that uh, all three of us know the, these three countries uh, quite well. We are comparing very different uh, uh, health systems, very different societies. Because even uh, if I take New York City and and Slovakia and Czech Republic, you know uh, uh, the the. The, the health system in Czech Republic is for for population that uh, uh, health system is monitoring people from from birth to death, and it's uh, it has its uh, un unbelievable pluses. Yes, the, you have the, your doctors. Uh, you are you are observed as you are growing up, you know, uh, by the medical specialists. Uh, you change jobs. I had to relearn a return to Czech Republic in 2018. I had to relearn that every time you go to 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 new uh, you start a new job, you have uh, entrance exam by doctor, you have exit exam by doctor when you are leaving your job, even even though this job is not really related to anything that really requires. Like my jobs uh, in Czech Republic were office. Uh, office-based jobs. So in the States, uh, in my 23 years uh, uh, in, in the States, I visited doctor less than five times. Uh, in, in, in my two and a half years in Czech Republic, I already visited doctors more than 10 times. You know, uh, the, 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 the preventive care in, in Czech Republic is uh, is uh, very very wide and ve it uh, it really uh, maps uh, majority of population. I I don't think that anything there is a state in the United States. I think the only organization in the states that has such a thing comparable with Czech Republic is U.S. military, because you know it's a it's a very different system. You know, uh, uh, and I'm sorry to to turn into the system from from the COVID itself. But you know, the population is uh, is uh, is living in a, in certain in a certain medical system. 
And I, I completely agree both with Martin and Yuji. Uh, if you can, Teresa, please allow me to share the screen again. I would like to um, just show uh, one graph that, that basically confirms uh, Martin's math. Uh, can you see it now? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, these are numbers adjusted for the size of population per million uh, people in each country. So we can see the vast differences between the countries. We can see Slovakia, you know, uh, well below average countries, the Czech, Czech Republic doing pretty well, and the US being the leader in the world in, in the number of cases per million people. Um, so this just confirms, um, uh, Martin's math and um, is just putting the graphics uh, into the picture. It would be very interesting, and I will initiate such a such a study uh, at my university to look at the numbers of uh, U.S. military, Czech Republic, and Slovakia. You know, because that U.S. military population that is. Uh, uh, that is uh, um, managed uh, medically by mm -hmm. by by uh, U.S. military, you know, is uh, is something that uh, that is comparable with what is happening in some way with Czech Republic. You cannot escape testing, uh, not only for COVID but almost anything in Czech Republic. You cannot escape being vaccinated. You know, it's a uh, it's, it's mandatory. So uh, it, it's uh, again, you know, it's. Uh, I think that it it will. Uh, my assumption, uh, and it, there is no data yet to support it, uh, is that uh, that uh, the the medical system will affect the the uh, the, the results. Uh, just to agree with with Yuri. Um, you know, uh, it has been suggested that even uh, the vaccination against tuberculosis uh, may be to a certain degree um, uh, protective against COVID-19. And both the Czech Republic and Slovak Republic, you know, uh, have had uh, mandatory vaccinations against TBC. Uh, so that might be one factor that might have, might have helped both countries to contain the pandemic also. I have a question if there are no more specific questions. Uh, my name is Rose. I, uh, before I retired, I was a hospital director in Iowa City at the VA. Um, I joined this because uh, I was down at the museum in Nubo community this weekend twice. And my specific question is, there are three or four bicycle bars in our Nubo community that were totally packed. I'm talking about hundreds of people in each bar and spilling out onto the cement in front. Not one person had a mask on. Um, and it was all three or four of those places. And my question is, uh, would that happen where you live? And how is that prevented? Because there is going to be spikes. We have another town in Iowa who is spiking, a university town uh, that's 100 miles away that is spiking. And Nubo right now is having more public gatherings with the highest densities of any place in Cedar Rapids. And I, it's great to sell masks, but I don't see a concerted effort in that community to do anything about it. Um, that's why I joined. If, to I, see. May ask, uh, if I may answer uh, or try to answer, this is you know the this would not happen in Czech Republic, um, uh, and uh, Olomouc is a town of uh, of hundred thousand people with suburbia. It has roughly 420,000 people, and uh, no, this would uh, this would not happen during the lockdown. Uh, uh, the police was uh, very effective in in uh, in controlling the crowd. It, 
they, they couldn't happen. And uh, once uh, they, uh, I remember uh, during uh, in the late March, early April, uh, any case where police had to had to find people with quite heavy fines, it was immediately on the national TV to uh, uh, to let people know that mm -hmm. they would uh, pay very heavy price uh, financially. Uh, now there is a case uh, from uh, from uh, I think May in Brno where uh, a lady who should be in uh, in quarantine she was. Uh, she broke it and she was arrested and she is now treated in prison hospital uh, because she will be prosecuted for for breaking her quarantine so that's so uh, you you have specific laws that require people to wear masks in public and uh, till now yes but especially the, there was a specific law limiting the crowd so uh, bars open uh, just recently. Uh, uh, restaurants open very recently. Most of the time, people could always go to the supermarkets mm -hmm. uh, to buy groceries. But uh, there was a certain time where, when uh, when uh, 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 people over sixty five could shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the time where the rest of the society could shop. Uh, but again, uh, it was not this uh, uh, like America, uh, uh, U.S. style policing, but it was quite a direct uh, reminder that uh, breaking the uh, the basics would be punishable, mm -hmm. and it will be punished. Mm -hmm. Well, Nubo right now, uh, that whole community is the biggest risk in Cedar Rapids, and uh, I just don't see any activity or education or anything in the papers or so i guess we just wait for the fallout um so and rose just as the representative of the museum we do have you know restrictions and protocol put in place that i know our leadership yeah. has improved. so we you know for us we're trying to do what we can um you Absolutely. know to make sure we're doing the right thing um unfortunately we can't you know control what people are doing outside of our institution, but we do care and recognize it and really. Oh yeah, it. yeah. I was I was at the museum twice in the last you right. know three or four days. But that's how I noticed this other mess. Yeah. Really. <laughs> I, I would like to stress one thing, if I may. Um, uh, I spent uh, more than a month uh, testing people or be uh, me, uh, coordinating and uh, and helping to run the testing uh, place at the uh, university hospital. And I have to admit one thing: we had a very close uh, um, coordinating work with uh, with the Czech uh, national police. Uh, they. Uh, uh, they help us a lot and i uh, looking back i really appreciate uh, their work they sometimes complain that they have nothing to do but there were situations where they had something to do but uh, uh, there was always the reminder that the rules have to be followed yeah. and it Thank was not aggressive force but it was present and constant and uh, and uh, I, uh, I I have to admit that that was there, and uh, uh, the coordin uh, coordination between us as a as a as a testing personnel and and the police was excellent, and police was always present throughout the town, visible. They made sure that people were uh, were not breaking the the rules um, put in place for for this uh, uh, situation. If Thank I you. Very quick comment. Rose, I don't have an answer for your question, which is an excellent question, but I don't think anybody has it and anybody will have it because there's this balance. Uh, this is a long haul. This is if we lock people in for two weeks and everybody will not leave their room, everybody will endure that even for two months. But this mm -hmm. is unfortunately something that we'll have to do for months to come and mm -hmm. finding the balance, what amount of freedom, what about of uh, self kind of guidance you allow people or population and what will be the mandate i think that's the, that's the key and uh, the perfect balance is different 
different from Czech Republic, where there's different population, different beliefs, right. different right. demographics, different for United States, different for, for China. Uh, you have people that want to express their feelings, they want to gather, they want to have a beer with a cousin, or they want to protest because they believe into something. Uh, what you're going to allow, what you're going to prohibit, are you going to give people a $5 fine or lock them in a prison for five years? I do not know the answer for that, but I just wanted to end up, and I know we're running a little bit out of time, and I don't want to blabber here towards the very end of it, but it is a uh, an, it's a new problem. It's a new situation, and we, as a uh, different countries, different professionals, different societies, we need to approach it differently. But certain uniformity is the key because if some people will stay locked inside and wear masks for a year, and other people will drink beer and hug for a year, those people that finally after a year of lockdown go out, they will get it from the other people. So it's kind of a this kind yeah. of the thing about see how we do as a, as a team, how we do as a mankind. Thank you. Thank you. And I seized the, the computer here from Teresa because mine is uh, <laughs> on strike. Great. Great comments. Thank you all. We are nearing our end, but I want to give uh, Dr. Cecilia Rakusek an opportunity to, to say anything she would like. Cecilia is our CEO and president, as I'm sure you know, and her background is in uh, healthcare and disaster preparedness. So, Cecilia, if you have some comments to make before we before we wrap up. Thank you so much, Jim, and I'll be very brief. First of all, I want to thank our three stellar speakers and Teresa and you, Jim, for helping to put this all together. But we were very honored to have the three of you, Hannah, uh, certainly Martin and Yuji. Um, and I, I just want to say that you highlighted things that were, for me, a great revelation, not only with the differences which I've been monitoring, but the fact with the, with the comparisons that I would question you, Hannah, about New Zealand, but we'll talk about that later, about so many things that, but the two take home messages for me, and I hope that, that you'll bring that out of this, is that we have so much to learn from each other. And secondly, that we as a National Czech and Slovak Museum and Library are here to preserve and here to connect and here to plan for the future. And I think that all of you have exemplified that today and we are so grateful. And, and this is gonna be, I would hope, uh, uh, Teresa, a continued dialogue that we have. So thank you for helping us share, learning from what we've done and planning for our rich future. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we'll say uh, to some of us, good afternoon and some of us, good night or whatever. But uh, again, thank you very much. Our next uh, our next webinar is on July, Wednesday, July 15th, when we'll be discussing COVID-19 and higher education. So if your schedule allows, please join us and please uh, spread the word and have a great day. Thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.